you don't know what's going to happen in the future. So you might travel a billion light years away and back. Now the Earth has aged two billion years. The sun has exploded. The Earth is no longer. There's nobody on Earth and you are the last person. Subscribe. But I haven't had the privilege of Formula One. But it's very exciting to see it, you know, just because, you know, the, the noise. Yeah, that's why I was got the sound when they pass the camera and it, it, does, it sounds like an insect. It doesn't even sound like a <laughs> car anymore because it's the engine is revving so incredibly high. Yeah, and the Doppler effect also doesn't help. Explain that to me. Uh, so the Doppler effect is when something approaches you, the frequency of the sound that it emits um, is increased. So as it, something approaches you, the faster and faster it approaches, the higher and higher the frequency you hear. Right. So it's it's uh, that like, meow, yeah. that, that type of effect. And then a lot of people won't like this, but that's also how to prove that the universe is expanding and is in fact a universe and not like a snow globe. Yeah, yeah, because I, I funny, I was watching something from Brian Cox earlier and he was talking about, so so the example he used, and again, I'm paraphrasing, universe is 13.8 billion years old, but there's stars, there's light that's taken 50 billion years to reach us. How can that be possible? Well, it's because the universe is expanding. Yeah, so, so there are stars further away from us light years speaking and yeah. the universe is old but we see them and that reason is because of um, the universe expanding at the speed of light and it's i think it was also brian cox or neil degrasse Tyson that used the analogy of a ant on a piece of elastic so if you mm. take the piece of elastic and you make two marks and you put an ant on it and the speed that the ant walks you move that elastic at the same speed pull it apart yeah. then that ant will never reach that other point. Let's stay in space. So, I think that there has to be intelligent life out there somewhere apart from us. Do I think we've had any interactions with them? Absolutely not, because there is zero scientific evidence to support that. What's your thoughts on whether uh, also, we are or aren't alone? The chances of us being the only planet to have formed life. I don't think we're the only ones. Again, I don't think there's people that's been abducted by aliens. I don't think there is extraterrestrial life that is capable of interstellar travel. Because <clears throat> why would we have not seen them yet? I want to talk about, not, not today because it's too big a topic, but the Fermi paradox. Because isn't that kind of what that's trying to, expl it's trying to explain yes. why we haven't, you know, why E.T. hasn't Phone been home. in a video with me? <laughs> You know why he hasn't popped round for coffee on a Saturday yeah. morning? What would let so let's say then? Okay, there's there's another almost a mirror image of Earth, but it's thirty million light years away. What law of physics would those people have to overcome to actually be capable of coming to visit Earth? So how far did you say they were? Say thir say thirty million light years away. Yeah. So make it easy are... for them. Yeah, yeah. So if they are closer, then the universe is old. So if they are closer than 13 billion light years, they should just be able to reach relativistic speeds. So speeds close to the speed of light, because when you can travel at close to the speed of light, the distances you cover become minuscule. Right. Yes, it would still feel for us. So for them, it would take a second or two seconds or whatever the speed is that they travel at. But from the moment... Let's say we know exactly the time that they leave. From that moment or the time they arrive at us would take 50 million years. Yeah. That's the problem with interstellar travel. Yeah. It's not time. that it's impossible, it's time. Yeah. So if I can travel at relativistic speeds, I can be there in the blink of an eye. But the place that I get to versus the place that I think I was going to is not going to be the same place. So you've got your own clock that's ticking at one second per second, yeah. which you then it feels for you it took two seconds to get there. But for the other people, the two seconds that your clock ticked took 50 million years. Yeah, That is what the time dilation is. So that is, right. and again, it's something we see every day so the gps yeah. satellites that orbit earth have to correct their own clock daily because right. they are their clock i think ticks faster than our clock so when you say re relativistic speeds do you mean relative to the speed that the universe is expanding That's, or um, so relativistic speeds means in the order of close to the speed of light so 
So like 0.8, right. the speed of light, stuff like right, that. I've so that's got, yeah. relativistic speeds. Yeah. Right, right. So so just a, a smidge under the speed of light. Because, you yes. know, we've all seen Star Wars, Star Trek, you know, pick a sci-fi movie where they hit the hyperdrive and, you know, they've traveled 300 trillion yeah. kilometers. And, you know, the, the, I, I think that those are the reasons why we've never met anybody as a film interstellar is very good at showing yes. relativity uh, that i can't remember the name of the planet but when they go down onto the planet and they're down there 20 minutes and they come back up and it's been 25 years or back on earth yes. or whatever it is but um yeah, that's I've recommended that film to you lots of times, and you should definitely watch it. Yeah, maybe I will. Really so, so you, you're kind of in the same camp as me. Then you you think there probably is somebody no. out there, but we've had no interaction yeah. with them. They may not even know we exist because somebody yeah. left a comment earlier. I think it was Steve's creepy van, and what it made me think of is Earth is a single grain of sand. Dump it somewhere in the middle of the Sahara Desert, but let the Sahara Desert be the last place you're allowed to search. First, you've got to search all the other sandy areas on Earth, every beach, every grain of sand. So the odds of finding the Earth, are, they're pretty slim. That's It's like yeah. the ultimate needle in a haystack or the ultimate yeah. where's Wally. You're never going to find it. So that could be applied to us. Maybe... They just haven't found us. They could be looking the same way we are. Yeah. yeah. So the the thing is, I don't, I don't think we will ever meet extraterrestrial life, especially, so there might come a time when it, where engineering catches up because most of the stuff in physics is possible. It's So it's no longer a problem of science. It's a problem of engineering. Uh, yeah. So the thing is, even if they travel at the speed of light, it will still take 50 million years in our time frame for them to get here. That, yeah. That's the problem. So if they set off at this moment, at the speed of light, they will get to us in 50 million years. The yeah. only thing that will solve this problem is generated wormholes. So like Portal 2 and stuff like that. That's the yeah. only thing. And again, it's something that's mathematically possible, but becomes a problem of engineering. I know we didn't ask for them, but I, I do love a quick uh, Q&A session. So somebody is asking in the side chat, will it ever be practical to travel forward in time by reaching relativistic speeds? So the people in the space station do it on a regular basis. So yeah. I think every six months they get back, they've traveled in time like two minutes ahead, something yeah. like that. So it's small time frames, but it's still something that has happened. Yeah. Now the yeah. thing that is, I can travel at the speed of light to the sun and back, and I would have traveled 18 minutes, or 16 minutes into the future, basically. But wh how will that help me? Because now I can't go back 18 minutes into the, or 16 minutes into the past and say, listen, this is what's going to happen in 16 minutes. Because if I travel back to the sun and back to the earth, I'm going to be 16 minutes ahead, of, ahead in time again. It's not mm. going to be 60 minutes back. So that's the thing about time travel at relativistic speeds. We don't have a way of getting back. There is no... So yes, we can travel. If we can travel at relativistic speeds, we can travel to the future. But that's about it. You don't know what's going to happen in the future. So you might travel a billion light years away and back. Now the Earth has aged two billion years. The sun has exploded. The Earth is no longer. There's nobody on Earth and you are the last person. Because yeah. you can never know what will happen in the future. Think of it as they are traveling faster than we are. So they see us in slow motion, if I can. Or we see them yeah. in slow motion. I can't remember which way around it is. How it works is, so it's easier to work at large distances because then it's larger time frames. If I travel from Earth a billion light years at the speed of light, it will take me zero seconds to get there because it's at the speed of light. So my yeah. distance decreased to zero. Now that I am there, I see what the Earth looked like the moment I left because it took me a second to get there, but the light traveling there took a billion. Oh, I see the Earth a billion years back, but the light traveling there took a billion years. And now I travel back. Now I'm back on Earth, but I didn't see the future or anything that happened in between because the light hasn't reached the planet that I'm at. But now I'm back at Earth, and now I actually see what happened. So you don't see the technicality in between. You see as light reaches you. And light can't reach you faster than light. It's this, I saw, um, I can't remember <clears throat> where I heard this. It might have been Brian Cox. Um, and the thing about two twins, and if, uh, if you sent paradox. one twin up into space, 
uh, you know, essentially what you just said. Um, yes. Shot one twin out and then brought it back. They'd still be <laughs> twins, but one would be like X amount of years older and the other one would still yes. be a baby. Yeah, so that was part of my, one of the courses I took was modern physics, which is, which deals with time dilation and length contraction and stuff like that. So the twin paradox is actually was one of my exam questions. I remember it very wow. clearly. <laughs> Yeah, so what happens is when the one twin leaves at the speed of light and gets to the planet and orbits the planet, now that twin, it took a second or less than a second for that twin to get there. The other one is on Earth, but the time that passed for the one on Earth is the time that it took light to reach the other planet. So if it's a a million light years away, it took a million years. If it's 40 light years away, it took 40 years for that twin to see his brother actually get there. And then the brother has to turn around and come back. So it's going to take another 40 years or 20 years, however far the planet is. So the twin that stays on (coughs) Earth in its own inert reference frame, that twin is the twin that ages. The other twin that leaves the planet in a new reference frame, orbits a planet in another reference frame, and comes back in a new reference frame, that's the one that does not age because of him traveling at the speeds of light. With that in mind, you know what you were saying about uh, extraterrestrial life on other planets. So is it possible that we are looking at planets that technically today hold intelligent life, but we are seeing them as it was before that intelligent life arrived? We might be looking in the right places, just at the wrong time. Yeah, so that is actually what astrobiologists are looking at at this stage. So looking at the compounds and the chemistry that is needed for life to start. Because we know what we need, basically what we need to stay alive here. So if we can find those things on a planet that needs to still start, we can see that life evolve and form and get to the point where they are intelligent. Yes, they might already have evolved to the point where they are intelligent enough to go to their closest moon, but we can't see that because they are X amount of light years away. If a planet is 20 light years away, if we look at it now, that is what it looked like 20 years ago to the date, basically. So if someone in, um, so we are in 2025 now, if somebody on a planet 24 light years away, looks at New York now on their planet, they will still see the World Trade Center standing. Yeah, it's crazy that. Is. You just did a science as well, Carl. I did a science. Yeah. <laughs> I did a science. Because I didn't even understand your question for Heinrich, let alone oh, the really? I'm smart. Is there any, uh, I want you to let everybody know where they can find your content. I know the channel is linked below if you just like to chill yourself briefly and then <laughs> we'll uh, we'll get rid of this rabble watching us. So uh, Carl, give him the full screen. Take it away. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Carl. Yes. So as always, I'm Heinrich, the real nuclear physicist. You can find me on YouTube as the real, uh, real nuclear physicist without the the and one word. So real nuclear physicist, one word. I am on Instagram as well as TikTok, Real Nuclear Physicist. You can find me there. Some of my shorts that come from YouTube make it to those platforms. Other than that, thanks for having me, Kriki. No, it's been my pleasure, mate. Honestly, I... Going is the Doppler effect. No, it's not. If I have to, I can demonstrate. Meow. <laughs>